Okay, so continu continuing from where we left off, what we need to do next is create the links that were displayed um, in the first video. So if we go back to our code, what we need to do is, well, first we need to remove this print underscore r, because we don't want that. And then in this block here, where the links are supposed to be displayed, we need to do a check to see if there are any links, and if there are, we're just going to show them. So if not empty uploaded, we'll just do a for each loop, so for each uploaded as name, because they are the file names, and then we're just going to do a simple echo, so we're going to output a div tag, oops, with a link tag, anchor tag, I think is the proper name, uh, with the link set to something we'll define in a moment, oops, ah, okay, there we go. And then inside of here, which is really hard to see because that bracket highlighting is getting very in the way, but here is where we're going to have the file name, so we'll just put that there first, like so. And then here we're going to link to the actual file, which is just files slash and the file name. So we'll do the same thing. Okay, there we go. So now, with a bit of luck and hopefully no typos, we can go back to our browser, hit reload, re-upload, and then you can see we've got these three links. If we click on one, we actually see the file, so that means it's working. For the sake of thorough testing, if we look in our files folder, you can see that we have these three files that we just uploaded. So, that's that. The next step is to um, create our JavaScript file to make this process a bit nicer and show the upload progress. Because if we just go back to our browser again, and say if I pick that very large file from the bottom of here, hit open and upload, you can see that there's no feedback to the user while this happens, um, so it could be quite, you know, it's not very user friendly because we, we just have to wait for the browser to send it and there's no feedback. Um, so that's the sort of reason we're doing this, but um, yeah. Anyway, so the first thing we need to do is actually include our JavaScript script in our thing, which we've already done. So, <laughs> oops, let's just pretend we didn't do that. So to include our script in this page, what we do is add a script tag, or read, has to have a type attribute, which is which should be set to uh, text slash JavaScript, uh, JavaScript, there we go. And it has to have a source, which is the link to the file. So this is something you should be able to add to the URL to get the script to appear. It's the same as like an image link, or whatever, a link basically. Um, so this is for us, it's just upload.js, because our script is in the same folder. Something to note is that you can't, or you're not meant to, close these like that. Um, you have to have a closing script tag. Otherwise, bad things happen. Okay, so let's go back to our. Let's not go back to anything. Let's go to our upload.js and we'll start work on our actual JavaScript script script thing. <laughs> um, yeah. Um, so first thing we're going to do is create a um, a way for something to happen on the person clicking the submit button. So problem is that there's no easy way for us to get hold of this submit button from the JavaScript. So what we're going to do is add an ID to it, which is just going to be submit, and then we can use a JavaScript function to get this input element. So if we go back to our script, we can do that now. So the way we can get that is by using document get element by ID. This takes one parameter, which is the name of the element, which is submit in this case and that will return a element basically so we can create a new variable called uh, submit button or submit and set it equal to that problem is that this JavaScript runs before the page is loaded so if we run this at the moment it'll cause an error um, because this won't return um, an actual element because that element hasn't been created yet so what we need to do is wrap this inside of a method which is run when the page loads the way we do that is by adding an event listener to the window object. So we do that by doing window add event listener and we want to listen for the load event and when this event fires we want to run a function which we're going to define in line because it's just easier. This function has to take one parameter which is the event 
and there we go. So now what we can do is um, put this inside of here so that it only gets diff uh, it only you know runs once the window is loaded and that won't cause any errors. So just for the sake of testing at this point it's probably a good idea just to stick an alert in here and just see if that appears. So let's go back to our browser, hit reload and you can see that we get this alert which means that our script has worked and it has been able to get the upload button. Also something I'm going to mention at this point is um, Firebug. If you're using Firefox like I am there is a add-on called Firebug. If you activate it you can, well, you can activate the script thing and it's a really useful tool for debugging JavaScript. One of its most useful features is the console because you can actually send messages to this console via JavaScript. So instead of having loads of alerts popping up all the time and you having to click OK, 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 what you can do is have them logged to this window here. So if we go back to our script and replace this alert with the console.log method, um, just for the sake of it, let's just do test, go back to our browser, hit reload, you can see test has appeared in this console window. So this is something we're going to be using a bit later on because we need to show a lot of debugging information and we don't want to like spam the user with loads of alerts they have to click, uh, keep clicking OK to. I mean it's only for debugging so you could just go for the alert method if you want. Um, and if you're not using Firefox um, there is a similar extension for Chrome I think built in. Um, not sure about Internet Explorer, most likely not. Um, oh actually there is something I should mention about Internet Explorer if we go back to our JavaScript. Internet Explorer doesn't support the add event listener. They've got their own attach event something, I think it's a listener uh, method. However, that's being fixed with Internet Explorer 10 and that's the only time when um, support for this method we're using is going to be added. So you don't need to worry about the alternatives for Internet Explorer. So, that's enough of that. What we need to do now is define a function which is going to be executed when the user clicks this button to handle the file upload. So we're going to actually define this just above here because it's going to be quite an extensive function um, and we don't want to define it all in line because it will get quite messy. So we're going to create a new variable which is going to be called handle upload. This is going to be equal to a function and the function is going to take one parameter which is going to be the event, so just the same as here and then it's going to do the upload basically and then down here what we can do is attach this function to the click event. So we can do submit add event listener click uh, okay and then we want the, the function so this is going to be handle upload. So hopefully you understand what's going on at this point um, if not it's probably a good idea just to go and sort of brush up on some basic JavaScript stuff because, um, well, uh, it's only going to get more complicated. <laughs> yeah. So, if you understand, keep watching. So, what we need to do is first prevent the form from being submitted. So, at the moment, when the user clicks the button, this function will be called, and then the form will be submitted as usual. Because we're handling the upload ourselves in the JavaScript, we don't want this um, event to ca carry on. So the way we do that is by using the prevent default method from the event and we also want to stop it propagating um, which is um, like that. And what that does is prevent this event causing future events, if that makes sense. That's all propagation right? I think I have. Okay, so now that we've done that, what we want to do is get hold of our file information. And we can do that from the um, file element itself. So, as I hinted to earlier, what we need to do is get uh, a way, if you like, to get hold of the file. So we're going to do the same thing as we did down here. We're going to go back to our HTML and we're going to add a ID to our file. So, ID of file. And then here, in our JavaScript, we're going to create a new variable called file input, which is going to be document. Uh, nope. Get element by ID file. Like so. 
now we should have our file element itself. So what we need to do next is get the information um, about the actual files that are selected. And the way we can do that is from a file input we've got the files array. So the file input has a property called files which has various information um, or bits of information about each file. So for the sake of testing let's just length. Let's just log that to the console so that we can see if we've actually got something that works. Let's go back to our browser, hit reload, and now when I select some files, four files, and hit upload, you can see that we get a break, which is bad. Why has that happened? File input is null. What have I spelled wrong? So this is another reason why Firebug is so useful, because you get these like warnings. Anyway, let's look at let's see what I've done. Um hmm. <laughs> okay, file input shouldn't be null because we've defined it. It's the same, isn't it? Whoops. Yeah. Um so maybe is the I I spelled the ID wrong? ID file. I've saved this. Okay. Oh if. Okay, that's the problem. I had an if where I should have had an ID. Okay, there you go. Debugging. Live. Not live. Recorded. But not edited. Yes. Um, so now if we reload this again, we will we'll see. I think Chrome has a built-in version of Firebug that does that sort of debugging stuff. Anyway, let's hit upload. Oh, look at the log. And you can see that we have four. Um, don't worry about that. That's just because I didn't clear it from before. Okay, so that's enough for this part. We've got something that is essentially working. So in the next part, what we're going to be doing is actually, um, you know, dealing with our sort of upload, basically. So thank you for watching, and come back for the next part.